all you wonderful people and welcome back to Dangerous Minds. Hey, I am making a video to explain why I like Agent Koba. Now, I know I'm in the majority, minority, I'm sorry, but that's okay because most of the time I am. Often, minority of one. So, Without further ado, I'm going to tell you why. Now, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the Jodi Arias case, but in her trial, she took the stand. Oh boy, did she take the stand for days and days and days. Her sparring partner was prosecutor Juan Martinez. Now, I heart Juan. Um, he... He was brilliant, but he was up against a master pathological liar. When I say master, I don't mean she was good at it so you couldn't see the lies. You could see the lies, but she could unflinchingly lie. I mean, you just have to look at her 48 hours interviews where she talks about this, these ninjas and she talks about I think it was a 48-hour one. It was one of them anyway. And she says she left Travis on the ground dying and she takes off and she doesn't contact 911 or the neighbours or anyone else. She just leaves. I mean, do you not see a parallel with this line of thinking in the way Miss Kessinger drives us crazy with ridiculousness. So basically what you have here is two people who will say anything and think it's going to be believed because that's what manipulators do. But they've only learnt it because they have been believed in the past. If they hadn't have been believed, they wouldn't have developed this way of interacting. They would never have developed their lies because they wouldn't have been believed. So what would be the point of doing it? It's all a game. It's a game to them. They want the one-upmanship. They want the control and the power of being the only one who knows the truth to the exclusion of anybody else. And that makes them feel really important and really good and they're patting themselves on the back saying, yeah, I did a really good job there. So what you had in the Arias case was one who was trying to extract the truth from Jodi Arias. And there's no way in the world, I don't even know if Jodi Arias herself is capable of understanding truth or the, the nature of it anyway, and certainly not the importance of it in a healthy-minded way. And I'm of the opinion that Kessinger's line of thinking is in a similar vein. Hence my video, Jodi Arias by proxy. Now, we go back to the trial of Arias and Juan Martinez was, he, she basically stonewalled him. She took the challenge, she thought she was going to show her superiority and she took him on. And that's, it, and it went on. It went on and on and on. And she loved it. You could see her duper's delight when she, um, thought she got the better of him and thought, oh, uh, that was a good one. But, it, I mean, it just showed that she was just smarmy and made, made you want to jump through the television while I was watching it on YouTube and just wring her scrawny little neck. But, well, don't you feel that way about a certain other person? So while Juan's um, needs were to try to extract some truth from her because it was a court situation. Mr. Kovac's um, agenda was to keep her talking because we had no information. We needed th that information from her. And in order to have that information, to analyse it, and, and they have many different analyzers. Um, linguistics is only one of them. Um, many others that would be able to put and um, 
their take on what she is saying. So even though to us it seems ridiculousness, to somebody who knows what to look for, it's a treasure trove of information. And in that way, he achieved that. She, she could have got up and left at any time. She was just there to be a witness. They were just collecting information from her. So what he did was he took on a conversational tone with her. Now, she's a gossip monger, drama queen type. So that's what he played up to. And he led her along those lines. He laughed with her. He um, complimented her. And this is really important with this type of person because they think if they're being compli uh, complimented, then, oh, they're winning the game. And you can't see what they're doing. Now, I, I believe Kobach could see exactly what she was doing. And that's why he was chosen for this job. Um, I don't know if he might have been the best at this type of conversational interview or um, if they had alternatives, but he was certainly really good at it because he came across like he was just sitting at the um, kitchen table having a coffee and just talking to her and laughing with her and thinking, oh, I, you know, you're, uh, yeah, I know. Oh, I can, <laughs> yeah, oh, look at their big house. Oh, yeah, I know. How expensive was the car? Oh, how, um, how little did they earn? My God, they only earned 100000 How could they possibly afford that? And she, he, so he was bringing it out of her. He was showing us or, well, not us, because I'm not sure it was intended for public consumption, but he was showing anybody who wanted to analyse her how she was thinking and what she was thinking of by this conversational tone because she kept going, and boy, does she keep going, doesn't she? I mean, she really does. So we get a lot of insight into how she's thinking and why she's thinking it and what motiv motivates her. And without that we would not have a clue of who she really was and what the dynamic was and what she did in that relationship. Now, when it comes to the father, I know a lot of people um, don't like the way Agent Kobach handled her father. And I can understand that because it does look like he cartels to her father when her father steps in and cautions her to be quiet and uh, says don't lead and there's earlier examples and there's probably examples to come. I do agree that it is ambiguous here. There is am ambiguity and there could be another dynamic behind the scenes. But for the sake of the um, this interview and for the sake of keeping her talking. Remember, there's another interview after this, I believe. Plus, on top of that, there's there's one or two phone interviews. Now, those may never have happened had she shut down during this interview. Had her father said to her, no, don't do any more. We're out of here. We're out of here. She may never have spoken again. So we may not have had any of that subsequent information. Another thing is I see people who think, oh, I should have sent in the lady. Um, no, I don't think so because these types, and we saw this when the person who was helping her, um, the, uh, I, I, the health person or mental health person, I, I'm not sure what she was, when uh, Kessinger, I nearly said Iris, when Kessinger was playing the victim and say, oh, she needs therapy, oh, and they sent in the, the advocate. Now, you saw how she pretty much, uh, she was rude as far as I'm concerned. Kessinger was rude to that lady. That lady was lovely and so compassionate and so understanding. And Kessinger just virtually 
um, turned her back. Like, it was as if she turned her back on the lady and just wasn't interested at all. And this is because the Kessingers and Arias's play up to men. Um, I, I, this is not sexist. I'm not saying this in a sexist way. It's just the, the, our human nature, the way um, we're made. And so she's appealing, she's using her sexuality to appeal to men. That's how she has developed this modus operandi that she has. And it doesn't work for women in general because women see straight through it and can't be bothered with her and think, you know, oh, my God, well, you just have to read the comments to see what what um, women think of her in general. I mean, I, I know that there's men that think exactly the same way, but I'm talking about in general and why and how. If it didn't work, she would never have developed it. So she knows it works. When she's talking to a man, she's like, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm good. Look how good I am. Ah, da, da, da. And, and on she goes. But with a woman, she knows she's not going to be in that same position. She's got no need to stir up that chemical reaction. And so she would tend to to not just blah, blah, I'm so good, I, 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 tell I, me, 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 I, because there's no reason for her to try and impress. She's doing this because she's trying to impress and she's trying to convince. And she feels like she can convince a man easier than she can convince a woman. And therefore, it was better to send a male in. The, the best person would be a young really good looking detective and then she would if she would just go and spew and, and we would have so much information well that we wouldn't know what to do with because she would just be off because she would be slinking virtually slinking across that desk now there's technical reasons and all that kind of stuff that I could go into but I'm not, going to, I'm not going to bother. I want to get back to um, dissecting the interviews. But I just wanted to put this out there. I wish I could get to you all individually, but I can't. So it's just easier to put it in a video and post it up and any of you can look at it and comment and see what you think. So it's not to convince you. It's, uh, it's merely to tell you what my thoughts are on it and how I see it. So thanks for listening and I look forward to comments go for it see what you think